we're going to have a look at the next part of the C12 chemical analysis topic, which is all about testing for positive ions. So this whole chapter is about analysing chemicals and compounds and uh, what evidence we can get and what, how we can identify what makes up a particular compound. And today we're going to be looking at positive ions. Right? There's another lesson after this on negative ions, but we're just going to focus on positive ions. So quick recap, a positive ion is an atom which has lost an electron. So if we have a look at some of the ions we're going to be testing, we've got a lithium plus ion, which means it's lost one electron. Sodium plus, one electron. Potassium plus, one electron. Copper two plus, which means it's lost two electrons. And calcium two plus, which means it's lost two electrons. So again, just a positive ion is an atom, a metal atom, because the metals lose electrons and the non-metals gain them, that has lost electrons. And the charge, whether it's one plus, two plus, even three plus, in some cases, if I scroll down a bit, you can see we've got aluminium three plus, lets uh, you know how many electrons have been lost. And that obviously links into the periodic table quite nicely. So if we have a look here, recap that the group number, which is these, tells you the number of electrons in the outer shell of those particular, of each particular element. And I've only circled the first three because I'm only interested in the metals now. So these ones here, Will have got one electron in their outer shell, which means they'll lose that electron when they react and become a plus one ion. Group two will lose two electrons to become a plus two ion. And group three will lose three electrons to become a plus three ion. Okay, so there's a couple of those we're going to look at as well, like the transition metal ions. So, iron, for example, because it's a transition metal, it can have multiple ions. So, we're actually going to be looking at Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus. So in one of the compounds, the ion has lost two electrons, and in the other one, it has lost three electrons. So let's go back to your summary sheet uh, and have a look there. So there's two different tests we're going to do. We're going to do flame tests on these five here, and then we're going to do some sodium hydroxide tests on some others. So first things first, I'm going to light my Bunsen burner. And you need to know the flame colours for your GCSE examinations. Okay. So, keeping it in a fairly dark room, hopefully you'll see the flame colour uh, quite easily. So I'm just going to work down the list there. So we've got lithium first. So there's two ways of doing this. I could take a lithium salt, a powder, uh, dip a, a metal loop in there after I've cleaned it with acid and put it in the flame. But what I'm going to do is I've got some lithium solution here and I've soaked the compound into a splint. So hopefully you'll see it. So can you see the colour that it goes? Yeah, perfect. It's got that lovely sort of reddy colour, all right? Ignore the orange bit now, that's just the, that's the flame, that's the wood burning. So it went a lovely red colour. We call it crimson. So that's gone uh, crimson. Next up then, we're looking at sodium. So I've got some sodium compounds here. Okay. And if I put that in the flame. Well, there we go, perfect. Can you see that? That lovely orange color. Unmistakable. They used to make um, old street lamps. All right, you still get them in some, in some areas of the country. Uh, have that lovely orange color uh, and that's because they're, they're sodium lamps so they've got sodium compounds in them which gives them that beautiful orange color nowadays they tend to be mostly leds because they're more efficient so that's got a lovely yellowy orange color yellow stuff so potassium ions and you notice the first three are all in group one of the periodic table how can i tell well, they've all lost one electron to become single positive charge. So we're going to look at uh, potassium. So we've got my potassium over here. So take out a splint. Oh, and flame. And then there we, this one's a fairly faint colour. There we go. You see that lovely difficult to see, 
goes like a slight purple color. I don't know if to see very well with that. So, so it's just going that lovely, like a pale purple, a faint purpley color. Okay, and we call that lilac. So it is like a pale purple or between pink and purple, effectively. So that is the lilac. And the final two, we've got copper and we've got calcium. So I've got copper here. Let's see what color this one goes. Yeah, unmistakable. See that lovely sort of bluey green color. Yeah, so it's that lovely sort of bluey green color. And the final one is calcium, which I've got over here. Let's have a look. Well, there we go. So it's like an orangey red. It's not as red as lithium, and it's not yellowy orange like sodium. So it is quite distinct. It's orangey red. There we go, see that? Lovely orangey red color. So I'm gonna write that down as orange slash red. So that's a really, really quick and easy test you can do uh, on a particular compound or a particular solution to find out whether or not it's got these positive ions. It won't tell you exactly what the compound is because obviously for every positive ion, there must be a negative ion somewhere. So you might have to do an extra test on those. So if I was to test this bottle of water, for example, uh, and was to just put it in, do a flame test like that. So put a splint in, put it in the flame, uh, and it went bluey green, I'm pretty sure it's got copper in it. If I were to dip it in, uh, dip a splint in and test it and it went orange, I might be a bit confused because it could be yellowy orange, it could be orangey red. So colors that are very similar are difficult to distinguish between but there is a further test you can do called flame emission spectroscopy, which we'll come on to in a later lesson. And obviously there is a problem as well. If this bottle was to have all of those mixed together in here, right, all of these different positive ions, then it will just, what they'll do is they'll mask one another. So it won't appear crimson, it won't appear yellow, it'll just look like a mixture, and it's very difficult to distinguish between them. Right, so it's, it is a nice, quick and easy test, which we can do in chemistry, right? So that's one way of testing the positive ions, is to do a flame test. And you need to know these colors here and the corresponding ions. So I don't need my books anymore. Let's scroll down and have a look at the sodium hydroxide test. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to test for copper ions, calcium two plus ions, magnesium two plus, aluminium three plus, iron two plus and iron three plus. How we're going to do that, we are going to put some in a test tube. So I'm just gonna get rid of the bottles I don't need right now. I'm bringing the ones that I do. I'm just gonna add some sodium hydroxide to it. Okay, so hopefully you'll be able to see it on here. Just come down. So the first one we're gonna test for is copper two plus ions. So I'm going to get some copper tubeless ions, this lovely blue solution here. Okay. And then what I might do for this one is I'm going to turn the lights on so you can see the colours a bit clearer. And then to it, I'm going to add some sodium hydroxide. So I'm adding just a few drops of sodium hydroxide. So there we go. There's the lovely blue solution. And then, okay, that is perfect. So you can see it's got that, and I'm glad it splashed up the tube, you can see some solid, right? There's actually a, what we call a precipitate that's been formed. And a precipitate is an insoluble solid. So it is a solid that does not dissolve in water. All right, so it's formed by two solutions mixing together. So I mix together these two 
clear, because you can see through them, solutions. One's blue, one's colorless. Um, and I've formed a solid. So I usually, general rule, if you, if you can't see through something, it's because there's a solid that's been formed, and you need to report the color of that. So that is a blue solid, a blue precipitate. Right. So how would I report on this? There's a couple of things I'm going to do here. So I'm going to just write blue precipitate at the end. So I'm also going to write an equation to show how it was formed. Okay. So effectively, let's have a light up this bit. I started with some copper two plus ions, and I added some OH minus. Now, this is quite an easy equation to get your head around because the number of OH minuses you need is the same as the charge on the positive ion. So if it's copper two plus, how many OH minuses will I need to form the compound? At the end, I'll need two of them. So it will form CuOH2. So can you see that that's a two plus ion, that's a one minus ion, a hydroxide ion is. So I'm gonna need two of those for every one of those to balance it. And this is the form, this is called copper hydroxide. And that's what the blue precipitate is. Okay. Right, so we'll do the rest now and then we'll fill in the equations at the end. So we're gonna look at calcium next. Calcium, magnesium, and aluminium. So, let's have a look. So we'll start with calcium. So I'll get some calcium here. Uh, you'll notice the difference between the calcium solution and the copper solution. The copper solution was blue. The calcium solution is colorless because calcium is not a transition metal. So there we go, that lovely calcium chloride. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some sodium I'll drop side in and then see what happens. So hopefully you can see that. We've got a precipitate form because you can't see through it. And what color is that precipitate? It is a white precipitate. So I will just write white precipitate here. Okay. And we'll do the equations at the end. So the next one down, looking over my uh, right shoulder here, we have got magnesium. So I've got some magnesium ions in here. Okie dokie. So we take some of those out. Similar again, magnesium's in the same group as calcium. It's in group two. So you can see the appearance of the magnesium solution. Magnesium chloride is identical. It's just a colorless solution. Lovely colorless solution there. And if I put some sodium hydroxide, it looks like a similar result, which hopefully is something. So there was the calcium one, here's the magnesium one. Can you see that they're very, very similar, in fact, almost identical? And that's because, going back to our work on the periodic table, the periodic table is ordered by atomic number, but also grouped, the elements are grouped together by how they behave, so the, how they react. So it makes sense that all the grouped two elements will react in a similar way to sodium hydroxide. Um, and they do, they form a white precipitate. So again, white precipitates formed. I'm just gonna put PPT as an abbreviation for PowerPoint from this point onwards. Save the sign. Uh, let's look at aluminium then. So aluminium is in group three, and you'll notice again, aluminium is a colorless solution. Aluminium three plus ions forms a colorless solution. Now, is there a pattern here with the other colorless solutions? Let's have a look. Oh, there we go. So you can see, similar thing has happened. It has formed a white precipitate. So, Calcium, magnesium, and aluminium form a white precipitate. So I'm going to write that in there as well. Now there's a problem here, because if I wanted to test my mystery solution, this bottle of water, I wanted to find out which of these ions are in it. If I add some sodium hydroxide and I get a white precipitate, 
there are three that it could possibly be. It could be calcium, could be magnesium, could be aluminium. So how will I distinguish between them? Well, there is something, and hopefully this happens, it's very temperamental, that you can do to, to uh, cancel out the aluminium. So all three of them are white precipitates. I'm gonna add an excess. So I'm gonna put more, so here's my aluminium hydroxide. Okay, I'm just gonna put some more sodium hydroxide in. And then hopefully, yeah, it's just about, okay. Just gonna just give it a quick stir. Okay, bung on it over here. Yeah, perfect. And you can see that the precipitate has dissolved. So the precipitate has dissolved in an excess of sodium hydroxide. To prove that that doesn't happen with the others, white precipitate, so if I just keep adding, I'll be able to carefully, just keep adding sodium hydroxide here, look. The precipitate doesn't dissolve, you just end up with more of it. So that stays white precipitate, this one as well. Again, similar results. So by adding an excess of sodium hydroxide, yep, the aluminium precipitate has dissolved, okay? So let's uh, just write something before we move on to the final two, right? So, let's have it. so the white precipitates, it's calcium two plus, so I'll need two OH minuses to make calcium hydroxide. Magnesium two plus, it's a two plus ion, so I'll need two OH minuses to make magnesium hydroxide. And aluminium is a three plus ion. So I'm gonna need three OH minuses. Okay. But obviously to make sure we know to differentiate between them, I'm gonna write underneath this one, dissolves in excess sodium hydroxide. Okay, so by adding an excess of sodium hydroxide, I will know this aluminium. So if I were to take a sample of this bottle, add some sodium hydroxide, a little bit of sodium hydroxide, I've got a white precipitate, I know it could be one of these three. If I add an excess, of sodium hydroxide and the precipitate dissolves, I know that working all the way back, that there was aluminium ions present. If it doesn't dissolve, it could be one of those two. And how would you differentiate between calcium ions and magnesium ions? Well, going back to the previous test, do a flame test. Calcium ions go a reddy orange color Magnesium ions don't give a, a color with a flame test. So again, you can actually combine both tests together that we've done so far to the same between things. And the last two, iron two plus and iron three plus. Okay, so let's have a look at these. So here, we've got some iron two Whoop. sulfate. It's like a lovely pale green color. Okay. And here, I've got some iron three, look like a yellowy color. And now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna add sodium hydroxide to both. So I've got two plus there and three plus there. So if I get my sodium hydroxide. Perfect. You can see, I've got two different colored precipitates. One is like a dark green, and one is like a rusty brown, an orangey brown color, okay? So I've got Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus. Uh, and if I put the light on, you might be able to see this. If you carefully look, the Fe2 the Fe plus one, can you see it's going slightly orange? Because what's happening is, is the, or, the green precipitate is turning into the orange precipitate. 
So Fe2 plus is becoming Fe3 plus. So it is losing another electron. It is being oxidized because oxidation is loss of electrons. And where is it getting this oxygen from? Well, it's the oxygen that's in the air above it dissolving in the solution. Yeah, so if you shake it even more, you'll start to see it go even more orange. Okay, that's a bit of A-level chemistry there for you. So the last two then, uh, do, do, do. we'll try and get these all on the same page so you can see it all. You have to go to the second page for the uh, iron three plus one. Okay. So if we do Fe two plus plus two OH minus, and it's Fe OH two, and then Fe three plus plus three OH minus makes Fe OH three. And what were the colours? One was a green precipitate, so this one was green. A green PPT. And the other one was like a, an orangey brown. Okay, so you can clearly see three of the precipitates were coloured, as in green, orangey brown, and blue and three of them were white. And again, it links back to something I told you earlier, link it back to the periodic table or their positions on the periodic table. So let's have a look here, okay? Right, so we've got, let's circle the, the white precipitates first. So the white precipitates were magnesium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, and aluminium hydroxide. The colorful precipitates were iron two, iron three, and copper, yeah? So can you see, it links to what I told you earlier. Back to what we did our work on the periodic table. The transition metals form colored compounds. All right, so these things here form colorful compounds. The group one, group two, and group three Metals do not form coloured compounds. So that's just a little lesson there to go through the chemical test for positive ions. Join us next time and we'll have a look at the negative ions.